guys and thanks for checking out my channel. Uh, it's been a moment since I've done a review video. However, I wanted to go ahead and go back to a review video for the DJI Mavic Mini. This is a GPS drone built by DJI that's, um, when I say affordable, um, it's still a pretty expensive uh, unit. However, compared to some of the really high-end units, it's actually very, very low cost compared to the rest. Still, it was $499 for everything you see here, and I'll show you what's inside the case as well. This is the Fly More Combo. If you're going to get one of these or you're considering get one of these, it's worth the extra $100 to get the Fly More Combo. It comes with three batteries. One is in the unit right now, but it comes with a, a smart charger, which can show you the battery life. It, it has a smart charging capability to where... It, from the beginning or from from out of the box it'll charge one battery at a time so you get the quickest charge on the battery instead of splitting the power up over all three the other thing this uh, unit has is a USB port and obviously the power button to uh, the power button serves as two functions one to you know to see your battery level but it also if you hold the if you hold the power button in you can actually charge your remote you can plug your remote into here and then if you have all three batteries in here, you can charge everything at once. It just takes a little longer to get everything charged evenly. But if you're in a pinch and you need a battery charged quickly while you're using the other two, you can just plug it in or put your battery in, plug your charger in. You don't have to do anything else. It'll charge that the lowest battery first, which is really nice because then all the power goes to that battery. So that comes with the Fly More Combo. Of course, the three batteries do as well. As I mentioned before, the third battery is in my unit right now and it is fully charged moving on of course you get the remote controller the which i'll go over with you guys um, i'll show you in a little bit how to turn it on and everything but uh, the remote's pretty simple you basically put your phone right here and i have an iphone but the uh, fly more combo comes with every cable you need either micro usb usb c or the lightning cable for apple products so this is fully adjustable so if you have a smaller phone you can move it in if you have a larger phone or even a even a tablet you can move it all the way out and if let's say you have a bigger tablet that you want to use or you just don't like the position you can get on ebay or amazon and find a very special um it's inexpensive but it's a very special thing you can get an accessory to where a little bracket mounts inside here in, in between here but it, it extends out and then you can have a larger, let's say you have a 10 inch tablet and it doesn't fit in here, or you want the screen to be extended out to you so you can see a lot, it's covering up your controller and you see nothing but screen. It's just a bracket that mounts in here and then your actual tablet can mount out here. Um, so there's lots of uh, small accessories, but if you're using a regular cell phone, you don't need to get all that. The controller will have everything that you need um, these are your antennas, of course. Um, now the Mavic Mini, uh, one of the price points that you're saving on is it still uses Wi-Fi to uh, connect <clears throat> to your unit. Now when I say it uses Wi-Fi, you do not need a Wi-Fi connection to operate this drone. You do not need a cellular connection to operate this drone. All that means is this controller connects, connects to that drone via Wi-Fi. That's its signal to how it controls it. And DJI is very good about their uh, signal um, strength. I mean, th this unit can go three and a half miles away, no problem. I've done it personally before. I believe the, uh, I could be wrong, but I believe the uh, manufacturer advertises two and a half miles, which is still a thousand feet is really all you're gonna save, is really all you're gonna need. And, and really the uh, requirements are 400 feet or within visual distance. 400 feet off the ground are no more than, I believe, no more than 400 feet away from you. Um, however, some of us like to test the capabilities and we like to see how far these units can go and it's kind of fun, but that's kind of a do at your own risk uh, sort of situation. It's always best to be able to maintain visual observance uh, to the uh, unit while it's in the air. That way you can see what's going on in case you lose connection with your phone or something. So moving back onto the connections, Basically, if you bought one of these or you plan on buying one of these, like I said before, DJI saves money uh, with, with a few of these lower or inexpensive units, 
by using Wi-Fi only. The higher end uh, products use OcuSync. It's a proprietary um, wireless system uh, that DJI created and the range capability is a lot further. The video transmission is a bit smoother, but uh, I am nothing but impressed with, with, what, uh, with, with just the Wi-Fi connection. Like I said, I've been out three and a half miles and had crisp video quality, no interference. Uh, the GPS is actually through the unit itself, not through the controller. So as long as your unit is in a good uh, spot, not under any uh, heavy metal or near anything, any anything that's going to cause a lot of interference. And I've even been near radio towers, and it's never uh, picked up any interference from those. All off of Wi-Fi, which is incredible. So. Um, that's where you're saving some money with this unit, and that's the difference between OcuSync and Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is going to be the connection, not not from your controller to the unit, although you can do that. But I'm going to explain what, what this cable is and why you need to have one. You, There's no reason not to use one of these. So basically the biggest difference is Wi-Fi, you're going to save money with DJI, but it still works incredibly well, and really for... I mean, honestly, any practical use that you're gonna use this for, the Wi-Fi works just fine. OcuSync is better, but you're definitely gonna pay for it. But the uh, the Wi-Fi transmission, is, it, it, it's not like a wireless router at home where if you're on the other side of your house, you lose Wi-Fi connection or you go outside and your phone doesn't connect through Wi-Fi. This thing, like I said before, will go three, I've had it three and a half miles away and didn't have any issue at all, all through Wi-Fi, which basically, you could think of this as your Wi-Fi router, your wireless router. You can think of that as your device that's using the Wi-Fi, but it is a lot better than just regular home Wi-Fi. And once again, as I said before, you do not need, a lot of people get confused, you do not need a Wi-Fi connection, like a home Wi-Fi connection or you know your home internet. That has nothing to do, when you see Wi-Fi, it has nothing to do with what you're operating here. That's just, this operates off its own Wi-Fi. Um, What's really important about these cables, like I said, if you get the Fly More Combo, I I know the Fly More Combo comes with it. The regular, if you don't get the Fly More Combo, it, they may come with the cables. Um, if they don't, uh, you can always get these on eBay, extremely cheap. It's called a OTG cable. I believe that's on the go cable. What this does is it connects your phone directly to the controller so you get better video transmission um, it's more instantaneous, uh, no, uh, way less latency or lag. Um, if you're not using one of these, you can connect through Wi-Fi from your phone to the controller, but that's another Wi-Fi connection that you have. Um, that's more data being transmitted from your phone to the controller, which then has to transmit from the controller to the unit, which can give you latency. If you use one of these cables, the video transmission is a lot smoother, a lot clearer, or more crisp video. Um, it makes the whole experience a lot better and it's safer because you have less uh, chance of interruption. So moving on, um, we've covered how the controller connects to the unit, what the cable is used for, how to connect your phone to the unit. Powering on is really simple. You just press it once and hold it down again. It'll beep. Um, you'll do the same thing on the bottom of your unit. And then of course to unfold it, Stop, start with your top arm first, and then the same thing on the other side. And then these come with a cover for your camera gimbal. The nice thing about that is, is when you're transporting it, um, obviously you don't want to drop this, but they're pretty durable. If you do drop it, one of the most sensitive things on this is the camera because it, it has a stabilization gimbal, a three axis gimbal. Um, and I'm going to show you in a second what, what's very important about that power on the unit once you have your battery in and obviously you're going to want a memory card the fly more combo does not come with a memory card but you can get them once again cheap on ebay or amazon press once hold till all those lights light up you can set it down it'll make the chime the dji famous sound that it makes now that you got both devices powered on later in the video i'm going to show you what the actual dji go app looks like and how to connect um, we'll just pretend I'm using my phone to record this so we'll just pretend that the phone is mounted in here and it's connected you can see through the camera you just want to make sure that uh, your GPS is connected it'll show you on the screen and once again I'm going to show you later in the video what that screen looks like and I'll point those things out to you but 
your GPS needs to be connected first if, if you plan on relying on GPS to help your flight. Um, you'll know when you're ready to fly. It'll tell you, it'll say um, the home point has been updated. Uh, it'll speak to you right through the app. Basically what that means is that's your takeoff point, that's your home point. So when you fly away, when you take off, if something goes wrong, if the controller, you could, let's say you turn the controller off, it runs out of battery or there's interference and it disconnects from the aircraft, it will return to the home point. Um, the only thing you have to be careful with, if there's power lines nearby, if uh, there's objects nearby, any anything in the environment, you have to really make sure that the um, that the drone is going to be higher than all those objects. So typically, what you do is you pick the highest object nearby. So if you have a 70 foot tree or you know really tall tree, you want to make sure the drone is going to be higher than that when it's returning to home. Um, if it returns to home due to loss of signal, but you still have a connection and it's getting and it's starting to return to home um, to its takeoff point, and you start to see video again, I recommend just canceling the return to home. There's a button that, or there's a um, there's a uh, thing that'll pop up on your app. It'll say cancel return to home. I recommend doing that because that way you can control the landing. You can control that it's not going to run into any, that's going to fly into anything. And you know you don't ruin your unit that you just spent four five hundred dollars on. So, anyways, axis gimbal which means that when your when your drone uh, tilts to the left or to the right like like this you see how the camera stays stable up down left right so if it's windy and it's trying to compensate by fighting the wind because the GPS will lock it in place as long as you have GPS signal this isn't gonna go anywhere it'll stay right in place your image is gonna stay nice and level because the camera stabilization is keeping it level with the ground. And if it's ever off, if it's ever tilted a little bit to the left, if the camera's not completely level with the ground, you can go right in your app and adjust it or recalibrate it. But you can see how it stays nice and level. It's very important for nice video quality. You can also see if it goes left and right, it compensates and makes slow movements left and right. That way um, you don't have jerky video, it stays nice and level with the horizon. And it just makes for a really good quality video for you. I mean, overall experience is a lot better. Some of the cheaper units, um, the aftermarket drone, or not aftermarket, but the, uh, the, the the drones that you buy that are a lot cheaper don't have that. Um, and it just, every time you hit a little bit of wind or anytime you turn or tilt left and right, it, it's gonna look terrible. The video is gonna be shaky and moving left and right. And it just, it, it makes you almost dizzy looking at it. So this, um, you'll see later in my video, I'm gonna show a sample clip of what the quality looks like, uh, just, just flying it and everything's just nice and smooth and still, and it's great. So now that we've talked about the what the three axis gimbal is, um, let's talk about the camera quality. So you have a couple options. It can record in 2.7K at the highest resolution, which is great. It's, it's any, unless you're a professional movie a videographer or photographer, you're not going to need 4K. I mean, this 2.7K is perfect. Even 1080p resolution, just the standard high def resolution 
um, would be plenty. It's a great image and uh, if you have a regular HD TV that's not a 4K TV, you're not going to really see the difference of 4K anyway. Um, so the difference between if you're recording in 1080 on this device is you can actually record in 60 frames per second, which is a very, very smooth video. It, it, it increases and enhances the video quality by a ton. If you bump it up to 2.7K, you're gonna use up more space and it's only gonna be in 30 frames per second, which still looks really nice. It's, it's still a great video quality, but um, if you have this or you plan on getting it and you try it out, try both video uh, formats. It's really easy to uh, navigate through the uh, app, the DJI Go app. You know, try recording one video in 2.7K at 30 frames per second, then try recording at 1080p at 60 frames per second. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now the video that I'm gonna show you is it gonna be in 1080p um, at 60 frames per second. So it's gonna be a really smooth video. Um, the wind was really high when I recorded this. Um, I, I believe when I show you the app uh, section in my video, you're gonna see that it tells you there's a strong wind warning, lower your altitude. It, it, it will give you anything that is potentially cautious or a, uh, dangerous for the uh, drone. It's gonna tell you right on the app, high wind, loss of GPS, um, if there's you know a battery issue or a motor issue it tells you right on the screen so you can go ahead and if you don't feel comfortable with what it's telling you you can bring it home or land it and um, you know figure out what's going on from there so let's talk about some of the uh, additional features that the DJI Go app offers uh, alongside with the uh, DJI Mavic Mini so you ever if you're into this or you're just getting into this type of a hobby <coughs> the uh, you, you, I'm sure you've heard that people have lost their drones, they've flown them into things, There's, they just flew away. You know, all these things are possible, these can still happen. DJI has so many features to minimize that. However, if something unfortunately does happen, there is a find my drone portion of the app to where not only it shows you the last location that it was powered on at, so let's say it, it crashed and it's not gonna be powered on anymore, it will still show on the map right before it crashed where it was. So it gives you a really good idea um, where to search and it saves that. You don't have to, it, it can be totally dead at that point, but it will still show you where it was through the app, which is just on your phone. Let's say it's still powered on. Um, let's say it just landed and, or you landed it, or it had to land because the battery was getting low, but it still has enough power to where it's staying on. You can make the drone make an audible noise um, so if you're in a wooded area or a field and the grass is really tall, you can still uh, listen. You, you know you'll be in the round the near you'll be in the correct area based on the map, but you're still gonna have to look on the ground for it. Um, you can make an audible noise. It'll start beeping. And that should draw you into where it is. Um, let's say you have damage. Let's say it's uh, you just spent five hundred dollars on this. Something happened and now it's wrecked, one of the arms broke off, the cameras, the gimbal's broken. DJI, on all their products, offer a Care Refresh program, and it's fairly inexpensive. The Care Refresh is an extra warranty, however, it was only $39 for one year of coverage, and you can actually renew it um, for the following year as well, I believe for the same price. So let's say you crashed your DJI Mavic Mini, or whatever other DJI you may have, and you have the Care Refresh basically you will as long as you can physically it doesn't matter if it's in a million pieces as long as you can physically bring that to DJI and that they will send you shipping um, they'll send you the packaging that's prepaid you do not have to pay for shipping to send it back um, as long as you physically have this and you bought the DJI care refresh they will send you another unit at a very very low cost I believe it's I want to say it's 40 or 50 dollars for this unit to replace it if you crashed it, which is a, is, is a fraction of the cost compared to replacing the entire unit itself. You know, that'd be $400 just, just for this. And it was 500 for the fly more combo. So $39 for one year, and then you can renew it again after that. Cheap insurance. Um, it may take some time. It may take a month to get it. Sometimes they get pretty backed up, but I mean, for the money it's it's well worth it and i know several uh, people who are into this that have used it before and it has worked uh, there's there's never been one problem with when they did it so the turnaround time was two two weeks to four weeks so two weeks to a month definitely recommend 
uh, doing that if you're able to. If not, it's a gamble, but uh, if you're spending $500, $39 extra dollars is well worth it. So now we'll talk about the vision positioning system. Um, some of my videos, uh, previous videos, I use the DJI Spark. I have since uh, replaced that with this. And the Spark is also a very, very, very good uh, little drone for the money. It's about $100 less to get the Fly More combo. Uh, it also has GPS, uh, very similar features. It just doesn't fold up like this one does. And the camera maxes out at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Both are still very economical uh, for the quality for everything you're getting. The only difference between the Spark and this, well, there's differences, but the as far as the vision positioning system, which are all the, the sensors uh, for the ground and objects around, the uh, Spark has uh, sensors on the front and on the bottom. The Mavic Mini only has them right here, and that's pure, primarily just for landing. But if you're if you're hovering or you're flying near something and you come near an object that's real that's a lot closer to it, it'll automatically raise up, which is nice because if um, you know if let's say you're flying it above someone and they go to stand up or they jump, it'll it'll automatically jump up. Um, so obviously you're minimizing injury to somebody. Or if you're flying low to the ground and there's a raise on the ground that you just can't stop it quick enough. These are pretty responsive and they'll auto automatically just raise up to avoid hitting something. The other part of the feature, of course, is for landing. So when you're holding the stick down, you can either select the auto land feature on the app or you can manually land it, but just by holding down, it'll get real close to the ground and it'll slow down and then it'll say landing and start beeping and it'll just land real smooth for you pretty much automatically at that point. So that's primarily what these, uh, they, they sense the ground um, it's it, everything's built in. There's it's real easy to use. Um, there's nothing you have to do with these There's just that's just what they are and that's what they're there for uh, Changing the blades is a little different from the spark. You can see that it uses a, a Phillips head a very small Phillips head um, Screwdriver which this comes with and I'll show you what uh, all the little accessories that come in the case but uh, the propellers are specific there's basically a right uh, there's We'll just say propel, propeller one and propeller two for this whole thing. Um, usually with these, these are going to be the same and these are going to be the same. But these are different and these are different. Um, so when you're changing these, there's little indications on them that tell you which one goes where. But as you, if you, let's say you have to replace one of these, replace both at the same time and then compare them with the ones you're replacing. So don't take all of them off at once. If you're gonna replace, let's say you're gonna replace all of them, do one set at a time and make sure that, make sure they're tilted the same way, make sure that they are the same propellers. Um, in theory, this will not take off if you have the wrong ones on, but it, I have a feeling that there's a possibility it could, and it'll, it'll turn left, I mean, left or right, or forward or backwards automatically and it'll just crash if you have the wrong ones on. So it's real simple, just make sure, I think I'd be able, I might be able to show you right here. If you look, this is tilted to the left, and this is tilted to the right. You can see how those are different. So just make sure those are, you're putting the correct ones on. So if you do them one at a time, you can compare them that they're both tilted the same way. And it's pretty simple at that point. Do not over tighten the screws. Just tighten them till they're snug. Um, they're not going to fly off. They're, these are uh, pretty high quality uh, products. The, the, these won't loosen up over time. But it, it is, I mean, they shouldn't loosen up over time. But maybe, you know, periodically do some maintenance on this. Make sure that these haven't loosened up. Just take, a, take the screwdriver it comes with and just lightly turn it just to make sure that they're still tight. So on that note, this is a case that the uh, Fly More Combo comes with. Um, it's a nice carrying case. It holds everything that you need for the most part. It has all your little accessories, extra extra propellers, extra screws come with every propeller. So you'll have plenty of screws. You can see the individual propellers that it comes with. It comes with the screwdriver. Um, for the controller, the control stick, uh, the, the little tips on the controller, it comes with um, these guys right here, can screw off, 
and then if you lose it, it comes with extra two extras to put those on. I just leave them in. That way I don't risk losing those. Your other on-the-go cables, so if you have Android, USB micro or USB-C, it comes with those. But as I said before, use these, don't don't fly without them if, if possible. And that's pretty much it as far as the little accessories other than the charging cables and charger. It comes with everything you need uh, to charge everything at once. So you have one cable for the controller, one cable for the charging hub, and there's one plug. But remember, on the side of the charging plug, it just takes USB so you can plug everything in at once. And it did not come with a memory card, but I bought a 64 gig memory card for about, I think it was $16 on Amazon, and it even came with an adapter, which you're gonna need a memory card if you wanna do anything, if you wanna do any recording at all, you'll have to have a memory card because the drone does not have any internal storage. Oh, the other the other thing that uh, this unit comes with is uh, pr uh, blade guards, which I, I got rid of. Well, I didn't get rid of them, but I put them away in storage. I never use them. But basically, there's a cage that goes around these that um, protects the blade. So if you're flying indoors, it might be a nice thing to have. Or if you're just really new into this uh, hobby or sport and you, you know, just you want to protect this a little more, in case you bump into a tree or something, it'll just kind of bounce off of it or it'll minimize the risk of damage. Or if you accidentally fly into a person, um, the, the the cage that goes around these, they're just uh, prop guards basically um, that it comes with. I don't like using it because I think it looks kind of dorky and it also adds a little bit of extra weight. So moving on to the batteries. To get these batteries, it's kind of tricky, um, both, both the drone itself and the charging hub. There's a little tab that you press in right here you just kind of pinch that and they pull right out these batteries are relatively small and they're, they're they're not like some of the other uh, batteries that DJI has made they seem a lot smaller however they're about 30 minute battery life um, per battery uh, per flight so you can get basically an hour and a half of flight with the three batteries all together um, so when you're getting into this, one tip I can, if you're new to this, one tip I can give is if you're near a charging source, if you're near any type of power source, when you switch batteries, if you're doing a lot of flying, throw the old battery or throw the battery that you just used right away in here and then start charging it. And you could just keep flying all day in theory. Um, the other thing as well, another tip I can give, um, very important, do not run these batteries down to to less than 20% and it's going to tell you on your app what your percentage is and the time left of flying. If uh, you get carried away and you're, let's say you fly far away and it, the battery's getting past the 50% or lower than the 50% mark, um, it will start getting to the point where, if it gets to the point where the drone knows um, that it needs to come home or you're going to run out of battery, it will tell you that, that uh, the battery life is getting low and it's going to bring it back home it's not a guarantee that it'll come back home because you have wind resistance and things like that so when if you're flying pretty far out um especially if it's windy don't let it get below 60 percent before you bring it back um, you really shouldn't be flying it out that far anyway but in case you do keep an eye on that battery life it's going to be at the top right of your screen on the app and make sure that you're not flying it out too far to where you have no not enough battery to bring it back or else it's going to start descending and it'll just land somewhere you land on a car on a house and water you, you never know if it lands in water you may never find it again so and you don't obviously don't want to land in a new car or someone's property so just keep an eye on your battery life um don't run it below 20 percent if possible because that will wear these batteries out a lot quicker and then rotate your batteries so let's say you go flying and you don't you you just use one battery that day um the next time you fly use a different battery or if you or if you um you fly once a day or a couple times a week and you just it, don't use the same battery over and over rotate these barriers around so they're all evenly getting worn down because over time these batteries won't have the capacity but you can always replace them they're not uh, that expensive i've seen them for as low as 30 bucks online 
on the last thing I can say about batteries is don't buy aftermarket ones only buy DJI products because these are smart batteries they communicate very well with the aircraft um, the, you can't trust some of these aftermarket Chinese manufacturers or they don't even have to be Chinese just any any manufacturer that makes these that is not DJI specific or branded don't trust them because you, you don't know they don't have the software capabilities that DJI has specifically put in these and you don't want, want to run the risk of it crashing because the battery didn't communicate properly or the capacity was read wrong because it was made from a different company. So anything you buy battery wise, um, for the most, all the other accessories can be fine, but batteries stick with DJI. One of the other great accessories I will recommend that anybody who gets these should get and they're extremely cheap is a set of parabolic dishes and these are just range extenders and they, they are good if you use them correctly they're bad if you use them incorrectly what i mean by that is these attach to your antennas which i'll show you right here they don't really attach they just kind of slide on so what this does is it focuses the signal it, it, it narrows the signal down towards the aircraft the only problem you can run into with these is if you're not pointing these towards the general direction of the aircraft. So let's say it's 300 feet above you, or it's 300 feet in the air, and, it, and you're, you, you have the controller pointed right towards it. That's perfect. That will give you possibly, well, it will give you uh, slightly better range as far as distance goes. And it will also give you uh, better video transmission quality as, as the further it goes out. The problem you run into is some people don't focus where the controller's going and you know they're kind of walking around a little bit while they're flying. Um, next thing you know, the drone is far to the you know far to the east or far to the west, but this is pointed in a different direction. So you're taking all that signal strength and pointing it away. Um, so you might you could actually lose signal a lot quicker with this if you're not pointing it the right direction. So. If, if that happens, it's no big deal. You can look at the map and see where your aircraft is. And you know, hopefully if you're flying legally, you should know where it is because you will have visible, visible observation of it. But if you can't see it in the sky, you can look at your map and see where it is in correlation with your controller and just point it towards that direction. And if your video was choppy before or starting to go in and out of signal because it was pointed away, you'll notice as soon as you point it towards it, tilt it however you want to do that you'll notice the video will get a lot better almost instantly and you'll be able to you know one enjoy your flight and two safely bring it home without any interruption now before I show you the video uh, demo flight of uh, what the video quality is like and you know the map and everything that works with it some of the fail safes that are built into this I talked about the battery if the battery gets too low it'll land it'll try to bring it home if your controller loses connection, the the uh, unit will eventually, I think there's a few, uh, maybe up to 20 seconds, it'll wait to try to reconnect. If it can't reconnect, it will turn around and, and come back home to where it took off from. Um, if it regains connection at that point, then you can take over if you need to. If it has a GPS error, which these do have, um, I don't want to say frequently, but it does happen. If you're moving too fast um, in sport mode, um, which is pretty much 30 miles per hour, uh, pretty much the max speed that I'll travel, sometimes it loses, it goes in and out of GPS signal. I think it's just because it's moving so fast, the uh, it's just harder for it to stay connected. If that happens, slow down. It'll tell you on the screen, just slow down, let it hover, it'll reconnect. If it does not reconnect and something happens with the GPS, you this is where the visual observation is very important because you can still see it at that point where you're physically looking at it in the sky and you'll just have to be able to slowly uh, bring it home don't try not to go in panic mode just bring it home um, and then you know maybe recalibrate your GPS at that point but typically they will reconnect in the air and you shouldn't have any problems so if that happens just slow down let it hover let it do its thing, let it reconnect. It'll tell you on the screen, it'll tell you the signal strength, how many antennas it's connected, or how many uh, satellites it's connected to. 
then you from there you can just continue enjoying your flight if it reconnects you don't have to bring it home if it gets too far out of range it will then just turn around and come back home until it reconnects and you can cancel it if you want so there's several features that this uh, specific drone can do amongst pretty much every other one that DJI makes um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail I think that's something you can uh, go through the app or get on DJI's website and figure out but they're basically different features as far as you can select a target that you're taking pictures of or a video of and then it'll count down if you select this feature it will start video recording and then ascend and uh, move backwards at the same time and it makes for a very cool cinematic effect now I'll throw a couple clips in to kind of show you what these different effects do. Um, it can also spiral around somebody and then ascend at the same time, or an object, whatever you want it to uh, be focused on. And it, it makes for cool cinematic effects if you're making a video of the family, or if you're making, you know, recording it, you know, your children's soccer game, or you know, anything like that. Instead of just having kind of just a boring video of going around you can throw some of those things in I personally don't they're, they're cool and all I personally don't like using those because I can do the same stuff just controlling it after you fly these for a little bit you can kind of get the hang of making those effects and maybe making them even better um, making your own cool different styles but it has those built in it's kind of nice to have um, it takes still photos the still photo uh, cam uh, the camera is a 12 megapixel camera um, takes great photos uh, the, and I talked about the video quality earlier which is I think I mean I think it's phenomenal I know the uh, some of the upper end units have 4k and the image processes are a little better but it like I said before if you're not a professional photographer a video photographer or a um, you know you're not making this a career purely based on you're not shooting movies basically uh, for big cinema pictures this thing is great and honestly I'm so impressed with the quality. I think it would be good for even the big stuff too. Now I haven't covered everything. There's other features. I mean, you have uh, light processing. Um, you can change, or like you can change your ISO. Um, you can the uh, if it's really sunny out on one side of the city or you know field or whatever you're looking out, but there's a cloud over to the right and it's really dark over there. You can change the uh, light filtering to where it's just it doesn't try to auto darken on you. And um, there, there's so much you can do with this. As I said before, once you get the basics of flying it to where you're stable and you feel comfortable flying it, you can just let it hover and go through some of those settings um, for the images, or just you can even have it just sitting on the ground and not even flying yet and still go through those settings. That way you can get familiar with it. The biggest thing is just how to turn it on, how to, how to charge it properly, how to fly it uh, properly and from there you'll kind of figure it out so from here I'm going to show you a couple clips just to show you uh, what this is capable of to show you the video quality and let me know if you have any questions uh, subscribe if you haven't already um, for those that have subscribed you know I, I'm kind of a multi first person I like doing DIY videos I like playing guitar um, so if any of that interests you and you want to see more, definitely hit the subscribe button and then please let me know if you have any questions. I'm pretty active on there. Anytime someone messages me or, uh, you know, comments, I, it comes directly to my phone and I usually respond pretty quickly. So definitely ask me if you have any questions. Enjoy the video and thanks for watching.